All right, I know you're thinking, Dave, what the heck, all we wanted to do is set up an API call. Shouldn't this just be a couple lines of code? But ideally, uh, you're gonna have a ton of API calls eventually in your app. And so in order to get this all structured and set up correctly so that it's organized and all makes sense, this is the approach to take. But we are finally at the worker saga, which is doing the API call, doing our actual hard work and returning our response from the API. So let's go ahead and get started with our worker saga. So we're going to first make sure that we have our HTTP client imported because we're gonna put it to use in this file. So in our case, we are using Axios. So let's import Axios from the Axios library. And we are also going to use two uh, additional methods from Redux Saga called effect methods. And basically what these do are uh, trigger off the code that we want to call that is asynchronous and also dispatch the result from that asynchronous code. So uh, we are going to import two additional methods from Redux Saga and they are titled call and the second one is put and it's from Redux Saga, and it's actually, uh, make sure you add effects there at the end. Cool, so those are the dependencies that we need for the Worker Saga. So to get started with our Worker Saga, we wanna make sure that we call it the same that we uh, have used here in our Watcher Saga callback, which is create lesson async. So again, it's a generator function, so we will export function create lesson async. And uh, I noticed one thing just now is that we are exporting default down here. We aren't actually meant to be doing that. This is the default here is our root saga, which is combining and we are just wanna, we wanna just export it here. So remove the default from that particular line. And uh, up here, let's make sure that we're back on our worker saga and we are defining it as a generator function. So the Axios HTTP client implements uh, promises. What happens is when you make a request, it will return a promise to you and you can then listen to that promise for whatever the response is, whether that's a successful response or the response failed. Um, so the way that we can set up our code is to make sure that we try that promise out, give it a shot, and if it errors out, we catch the error and act on it accordingly. So the way that we can do that in JavaScript is of course using a try and catch block. So we will say we are going to give this request a shot, and if it errors out, then we catch that error and we can put it into the E uh, variable here and then act on the error. So, and make sure and try, we are trying to call our API. So we know that we got here successfully if we can console log out, attempting to create a new lesson via the API.